Hey everyone, this is David Muniz, and welcome to our live here at Sinha Segura. This is our second live, and we're very excited to have here with us Gabriel Oba. He is the product owner of Go and Point Manager. And today we are going to talk about building an incident response plan for ransomware. Welcome, Gabriel. How are you? Uh, I'm great, David. Thanks for welcoming uh, me here in this conversation. It's always exciting to talk about uh, ransomwares. And as David said, uh, and Gabriel Woba, uh, I've been working with Sin Segura with uh, in almost six years, it's been six years, uh, and then the production owner for the privilege uh, and delegation management solutions, and for all endpoints, uh, Windows, Linux, in window, uh, Unix, and Mac endpoints as well. It's been three and a half years uh, or so. So excellent. Looking so forward for a talk. Excellent. Well, today we are going to talk about ransomware. And well, we've been hearing about how dangerous ransomware is, at least since I started working with cybersecurity. So at least since the Marsk uh, attack in 2017, ransomware is considered one of the biggest threats to business. And especially now with the cyber warfare, companies and governments are increasingly concerned about this kind of uh, threat. And well, we all know that when a company is hit by ransomware, the operations, they hot, the ransomware block their victims' computers, they ch in the, the gangs charge a ransomware, a ransom to unlock those files. And I'd like to bring relevant st statistic about ransomware. Uh, 9% of Americans have been targeted by this type of attacks, and two-thirds of ransomware infections are caused by phishing emails. The cost of ransomware is quite high. Uh, studies say that ransomware attacks generate $1 billion for malicious attackers. And there's, of course, the discussion about paying or not paying the ransom, but uh, well, at least my recommendation is not to pay the, the, the ransom. And it's believed that a ransomware attack takes place every 11 seconds by the end of this year. And 40% of, there's also an increase of 40% in successful attacks against small and mid-sized organizations. In this aspect, 60% of those organizations uh, that are uh, affected by ransomware, they shut their doors within six months of the ransomware attacks. Some of the areas that are most affected by ransomware are consumer goods, healthcare sector, which is of course part of critical infrastructure. But having said that, we are going to talk about the stages of infection of ransomware. The first stage that the malicious attackers have access to the infrastructure is, uh, is by gaining access to this infrastructure. And I'm gonna, I wanna talk uh, with you, Gabriel, about how malicious attackers can have access to the infrastructure. Let's, let's, talk, uh, let's go uh, a little bit further into this. So what can you tell me that some examples that the attacker can have access in, and in fact, the infrastructure with ransomware? Yeah, first of all, uh, the weakest link in any infrastructure is the human resource. So it's uh, the human uh, by itself, it's prone to errors, it's prone to vulnerabilities. So the end point of attack it's almost uh, the failure is of a human uh, procedure or error or, uh, or so. Uh, and then uh, how we can prevent uh, actually the, the human, uh, human mistake, the human flaw. 
we can enforce that by creating policies to ensure uh, to ensure and enforce that the users cannot uh, make the, uh, those kinds of mistakes. Uh, it's the responsibility of the administrator to manage which privileges uh, and which applications, uh, what the user is doing, what the user is capable of doing. So I think in general, it's the first step. You need to build your policy and make it strict uh, enough to erase this uh, type of endpoints of uh, attack. I agree with you. I mean, it's not just, oh, I mean, the, the human aspect is really uh, explored by those malicious attackers, especially by spare phishing campaigns. But we also have uh, RGP exploitation vulnerabilities that are explored by those malicious attackers. And also they can purchase access, privileged credentials on what we call network access brokers in the in the um, in the deep web, in the dark web. So there's, I agree with you. The human aspect, I think, is a great way to have. It's a, a, a very popular way for malicious attackers to gain access to the infrastructure. But yeah, after they gain, after they gain access, they begin to infect and move laterally into the victim network how how is this dynamic work what kind of what kind of asset they're looking for gabriel in general uh, the attacker is looking for um servers uh it starts when uh, the user uh, or the attacker has a user credential and if that credential is privileged enough to access some endpoints he can start moving laterally, like he starts with an endpoint, he goes to another one, then he finds another credential, he goes to another one, and the target in the end is almost always uh, a specific server which maintains or contains the sensitive data. And why those? Why they explore privileged credentials? Why attackers like to explore those privileged credentials? The privileged credentials are the one who can run uh, the malware applications by itself. Uh, he can uh, input those privileged credentials into malicious services. He can gain access to uh, even install the, the malware uh, application and run in the background scientifically. Um, and the privileged credentials are the ones uh, which are only the ones who can access the servers as well. So it's the main point of uh, uh, attack when talking about credentials. When the user gains access to one credentials, tries everything uh, to obtain the, those privileges so he can do all this uh, dirt work because Without privilege, you can't actually infect the the end point or the, the workstation or the server and so and so. Excellent. No wonder why they are called the keys to the kingdom, right? Yeah, <laughs> it's a popular well, thing. <laughs> Everything about that. I agree. I agree. So, Gabriel, do you th how do, how do you see that? Do you see, do you think that companies should or not pay the ransom? Uh, I don't think they should pay because uh, for two main reasons, actually. It's not guaranteed to get your data back and you're encouraging the modern war warfare. Uh, and you're encouraging other attacks. You're encouraging the attacker to attack other companies, the government. Um, you are actually part of the problem in my point of view. But you are also uh, the hostage of this situation. So it's such a hard place to be in. So uh, it's actually such a delicate topic to, uh, to talk about. My, but uh, but in, in my view, you should not pay the, the, the handsome at all. Well, especially consider that a very small percentage of companies are able, I think it's 
for it's less than 10 percent of organizations that are victim of a ransomware attack they are able to actually recover they, their files and not only that i think that when companies pay the ransom they are in, well they also finance the production and the development of new strains of new ransom so I, I agree with you i also think that companies should not pay the pay the ransom yeah so, it's uh sorry to interrupt the video, but it's ahead. so much easier and cheaper to try to prevent the attack to actually recover and pay the ransom so um uh, it's kind of uh, hard because you are paying for your security you're preventing you're not generating uh health and uh, wealth but it's when when you have that that idea in your mind it's so much clear that you should pay for uh, that security because uh the data is the mo most important asset of any company yeah i agree preventing is much better than responding but well now the company has been affected by a ransom now we're talking about what well an, an incident response plan is a, a is an essential part of addressing the the effect of a ransomware attack so now that we've seen all the stages of the infections let's take a look at the steps of the this incident response plan the first step is the risk assessment so it involves assessing the risks and threats that are faced by the by the company and what are those those risks well there's the financial loss because well you stop or you halt your operations you lose you lose productivity there is it costs legal fees network modifications and also uh, uh insurance that you have to uh, pay the, uh, the 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 insurance company has to pay so there are a lot of aspects that are involved in the in these uh, that are associated with uh, ransomware. The next step is identify the identification of a ransomware attack. So when implementing an incident response plan for ransom ransomware, it's possible to identify the attack and take account here many times of malware that are similar to ransomware. And now let's talk about signs. How do you how do you know that your company has been affected by a ransomware? Um, it's kind of hard to measure, but uh, you start. Uh, first of all, you should have some uh, security applications or security assessments that could help you. Uh, identify uh, those uh, type of attacks, answers. So, uh, antiviruses or uh, PDM solutions, which are privilege and elevation management solutions. Um, there's even Windows uh, notifications, but the, it's hard to measure actually what the damage uh, you have in, in your you in your part in your your site because once the uh the handsome starts uh, attacking your networks it's moving laterally so you uh it's kind of hard to measure how many endpoints it's been attacked so uh there's uh, there should be socks as well uh someone watching your sites to see uh, risk comportments, weird access. There's many time things that you should pay attention to that are indicates that you are being attacked by answers. And there's also the aspect of ransomware as a service. Can you 
can you tell us more about how it works and why is that that danger? Put Davi, eu não sei te responder isso. Tá bom, beleza. Aí você me pegou de deixar. Porta. Pode deixar, eu vou falar, eu vou dar uma introdução e aí se você quiser você você complementa, tá bom? Beleza. Beleza. And there's also there's also the uh, the aspect of ransomware as a service. I mean, there are and the risk and this is I think it's one of the biggest problem about ransomware because when you have ransomware as a service, it gives power to people outside of IT that's, that that has no knowledge on programming to develop ransomware strains. And this helps the spreading of this kind of malware because well People with no knowledge, they can develop uh, new ransomware strains. Now, let's talk about the main uh, ransomware strains, the, the, the most dangers that we have, uh, uh, we are aware of. The first one is the CLOP ransomware group. And they are mainly associated with uh, the with Ukraine people from Ukraine, and I know that quite some people have been arrested. Some of the companies and organizations that have been victim by the COP ransomware include the Masit University, uh, Software AG, India Bulls, Execu Farm. Another ransomware. Uh, strain is the county ransomware group. Some of their victims include JVC, Ireland's Health Service, the Costa Rican government. And this specific case about the Costa Rican government is really interesting because they have to de they had to declare a state of emergency because of the ransomware attack. Another uh, strain very popular and that has been caused quite some damage is the dark side. And they are associated with the colonial pipeline cyber attack, which affected uh, the, the, the United States. And I think the colonial pipeline has about 5,000 uh, miles of uh, pipelines spread across the uh, the United States. Another strain is the review, which was which was not only associated with attacks in Florida, but also the Casilla ransomware attack. And the last one is the Lockbit ransomware, who uh, victimized um, Accenture. The UK Royal Mail uh, and Fox Foxconn. So those are basically the main uh, ransomware strains that uh, we are aware of. Well, the next step is defining the scope of the attack, which means understanding and measure how much data and what were the systems that were affected by the the by the ransom. And well, probably how do you how do you think and how do you see that cybersecurity teams can what are the actions that they can take to reduce and to minimize the scope of the cyber attack? Yeah, once you identify that you are being attacked, uh, it's important to make an uh, immediate uh, immediate uh, action. It's like once you know, you instantly turn uh, the internet off or disconnect your your device from your network. Uh, this will prevent the network for spreading and communication uh, with your uh, within your network. And this is important to try to prevent the the answer to taking control over servers or sensitive data. Another action that you need to take is to actually try to identify which kind of the ransomware you are infected. This will uh, help you uh, identify uh, uh, and help you even try to recover your data because 
there are some attacks that you actually can uh, decrypt your your data from. So uh, some answers even uh, uh, you actually have some uh, removal instructions. So once you get infected, there's a uh, kind of answers which you have specific uh, uh, specific tools that can retrieve your data. Uh, another uh, thing that you should do uh, is to back up your, da uh, your data. If you have any data uh, that uh, you have on computer servers, which is sensitive, you should uh, make a backup of it. So uh, in the case of the answer spreading even more in other devices or workstations, or even servers, you, uh, the data backup should uh, help you prevent loss of data. And um, I think it, that's about it. Uh, you should also uh, consider to changing all your passwords uh, to prevent uh, further infection as well. Excellent. Uh, well, it's also part of the incident response plan informing the authorities about the attack. We are talking about data protection law compliance regulation that states that any attack that affects sensitive data must be notified. So we have GDPR in Europe, we have CCPA in the US, and GPD in Brazil. So if a ransomware attack affects the, your customer data, you have to be prepared to make the disclosure of this attack according to the steps established by those uh, regulatory bodies. Well, now that we understand the scope of the attack, we understand, we isolate the affected systems, we have informed the authorities, the next step is to recover the environment. So restore the data, there's no, so there's no malicious software anymore, so now we have to restore data. And you have mentioned something really important, Gabriel, which means backup. You have, you need to have backup of your data. This is really important, right? Yeah, uh, I think it's the most, uh, as I said before, the data is the most important access of your company. You have, to, you need to have uh, your data uh, up to date uh, backups. Uh, so if uh, you, get attacked by a answer. Once you lost the data, you, you can just uh, recover it from your backup and it, you should be fine. You should not pay, uh, you should not have to pay the handsome. So it's a small action that has so many benefits. So it, just do it. Uh, after this video, uh, back up your data again, synchronize all the sensitive data again, and you should be uh, fine, you should be ready to go. And of course, don't forget to isolate your backup for your production data. So your backup also not get encrypted, right? <laughs> well, the next step is the incident recovery plan. So if you're not prepared to restore systems and your data after the attack, you need to create an incident recovery plan for the ransom. Well, and that can be quite time consuming, but it's essential to avoid errors during this uh, these recovery part. And also, you should also look for ways to recover files that were not saved in backups. And of course, you have to constantly verify those backups because while well, it's useless, if you take all those measures to backup your data, if you do not verify their integrity and you don't properly protect uh, those backups as well. The, la the, the, the last step that we talk when uh, about ransomware attack is to apply the lessons learned. What you have learned during 
the ransomware attack. And once you recover the data and restore your operations, you need to check what has happened. So I think what, what uh, well, also you need to address how the attack got placed if uh, uh, it was a social engineering attacks. So this will help the companies not making the same mistake and also prepare employees to deal with future situations. Now, let's talk about advices for organizations in order to avoid ransomware attacks to happen. What do you think is the most important, Gabriel? The most important advice, what kind of advice would you give for uh, a CISO that recovers that uh, their infrastructure from a ransomware attack? First of all, you should uh, train your employees. You should uh, explain what a ransomware attack is, how it can uh, impact uh, your company, even the employees affecting them. Uh, he can lose his job, the company can shut down, everyone gets impacted. So the most important thing, first of all, it's actually train in, uh, everyone in your company and tell about what uh, a ransomware attack is. Second uh, uh, key thing to do is actually to prevent your park with tools. There is specific tools that can help you to avoid ransomware attacks. There's tools that can help you uh, avoiding the spreading of the attack. There's uh, tools uh, that can help you avoid the even the execution of the answer by itself um, in general uh, even a, a pgm solution has that all by itself you have uh, the policy uh, policies so that can prevent uh, the executions of the uh, the, uh, the malware uh, or the answer or even any kind of uh, Mower. Uh, but even if your policies kind of uh, you forgot to uh, properly set up your your policy, and even then you have like uh, a user that could run a mower. There is an out, uh, also another feature which uh, can help uh, prevent the spreading of the. Uh, of the attack, uh, there is a feature that can block all internet, uh, internet, and uh, network connections. Then it can analyze and see that uh, something weird is going on, and then shut down all the connections by itself. And there is even another feature that can help you. Uh, uh, it's uh, it prevents to execute uh, to execute uh, a policy uh, or application, even if you set up it. Uh, if he, even if you allowed uh, someone to execute that application, there is a uh, feature called uh, application uh, malware analysis, which is basically a form of uh, like a hundred entities, which are like uh, website scanners, um, even malware and antivirus companies, uh, user uh, and the communities can help as well with uh, uh, grading the application, which uh, these gradings uh, rate the application if the application is malicious, uh, malicious or not. So there's like a hundred uh, entities judging your application if uh, the application is safe or not to be executed. So uh, when you try to execute application, even if it's allowed by our policy or not, you try to execute if the uh, application consider it's uh, uh, the application it is infected or malicious, the uh, execution is shut down. So you, you actually can't even execute the, uh, the answer. 
and there's even sandboxing, which is a isolated um, part of your drive uh, inside your operational system, which also you execute a ransomware or a malware or any type of malicious uh, application. The sandbox environment won't let uh, the malware uh, run through another types, uh, another uh, parts of your drive. So, uh, for example, you have a folder, and that folder is on uh, a sandboxing. Uh, if the the malware tries to uh, execute or make any interaction outside of that folder, yeah, it's actually, you can't read. It's like isolated by yourself, by nature. It's physically impossible to move from that isolated area. So there's actually a lot of possibilities to uh, uh, to prevent a hazard attack. Well, you have told up. Well, you have said about lots of cybersecurity solutions, and well, I think cybersecurity solutions are an important part of preventing a, a ransomware attack to take place. But I must tell you that I agree with you. Train the employees is an important part of avoiding ransomware attack to take place. Another advice also that we can give for leaders to prevent and to properly respond to a ransomware attack is to back up the data. Keep the system updated so the malicious attackers don't explore uh, vulnerabilities in the infrastructure. And the last advice that I can give for CISO is to protect email, your email, because business email compromised is an important attack vector that is uh, explored by malicious attackers to uh, to deploy ransomware in the infrastructure. Well, now that we have talked about the steps of uh, of an incident response plan, I think a last topic that I like to bring here is the of course, responding to the attack is important, but detecting and preventing the malware attack, the ransomware attack is also important. And how do you see the, the detection over response, Gabriel? Can you tell, tell us a, a bit more about this? Yeah, detection, it's so much easier. You have no headache. You have no time loss, no productive loss. Uh, you just buy a solution. The solution uh, does it all for, for you. So you have no worries whatsoever that you are prevented and you can sleep at night with no worries in mind. So <laughs> no, night, no nightmares about the brain somewhere, right? <laughs> yeah, it's so much easier. So there's no anxiety about it. So you. Well, now that we're heading to the end of this live, Gabriel, do you have any final thoughts for our audience? Yeah. Mm, uh, after all, we talked about today, detection over response is so much easier. Yeah, it's so much simpler. Uh, you have no headache uh, at all. You have no worries, no issues. For sure, you have to pay. Uh, you have to actually uh, pay a security tool to actually prevent your uh, environment, your site, your workstations, your data. But it's so much easier. You have no worries at all. You can sleep at night easily with no nightmares and everything's so much easier and in the end it's can be even more cheaper because once you lose your data it's your most important uh, asset of your, of your company how much is your data uh, worth it's worth more than a prevention uh, solution for sure it's not so 
always. I think it's a really good question. Yeah, detection over response is always the the correct choice here. Excellent. Well, to complement what you have said, um, we I also think that cybersecurity leaders should be concerned about people. They should train people. They should bring cybersecurity awareness to their team because, well, I think it's useless if you have lots of cybersecurity solutions if you don't address what, you, what we have called the weakest link in this chain, which is people. Well, uh, we are running almost running out of time, so I would like to thank Gabriel and our audience for uh, watching this this session. Thank you very much, Gabriel, for your precious insight. And see you guys next time. Bye bye. Thanks. Uh, bye bye. Thanks for having me, David. Thanks, audience. Uh, see you guys. See you.